my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie E. This is Ravenclaw and you are watching I haven't posted my Blackathon wrap-up, aka everything that I read in February, so that's what this video is going to be. February by far was my favorite reading month that I have ever had, and I know it is 100% attributed to Blackathon. In case you are new to my channel, Blackathon is a readathon that I hosted along with Lauren from the novel Lush and Francina of Francina Simone. During the entire month of February, we had different challenges involving reading books surrounding Black Americans or African peoples. It was not only the most fulfilling reading month that I've ever had, but it was a time where I was very, very proud and felt connected to my heritage in a way that I have never felt before. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the books, the comics that I read for Blackathon, and also how I just felt about the readathon as a whole. During the month of February, I completed 15 books and comics, everything ranging from science fiction to fantasy to contemporary. I read almost everything off of my Blackathon TBR video that I posted, which I was very excited about and the books that I didn't get to I will be reading in the near future. I won't be talking about the first seven books that I read for Blackathon because I daily vlogged the first seven days of Blackathon and covered those books in those vlogs. I also did a book diary for both The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and her new book On the Come Up. So we're not going to talk about those books because I've already chatted about them enough. There will be a lot of background noise in this video because I am filming it on St. Patrick's Day and there's a huge celebration happening right outside my window. The very first book that I read for Blackathon was Let's Go Swimming on Doomsday by Natalie C. Anderson. This book was one of my most highly anticipated book releases of 2019 and it did not disappoint me. I did an entire vlog on this book, so check out my Blackathon Day 1 vlog if you want to know all of my thoughts. To review, I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars and I would have rated it higher if it were possible. To give you an idea of how much I adored Let's Go Swimming on Doomsday, I went out and purchased this book immediately after reading it. And if you've been following my channel for a little while, you'll know already that I do not buy books that I haven't already read, and I only buy books at the very end of the year. I look back on everything that I've read from my local library, and then as a Christmas present to myself, I purchased the books that really stuck out. And I had to have this book immediately after finishing it. It was that good. The next book I read was Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. It was my least favorite read of Blackathon. I gave it two stars and I think I'm being pretty generous with that rating. I went into extreme detail with my issues about this book on one of my Blackathon vlogs, so definitely check that out if you're interested to know why I hated it so much. I also wrote quite a lengthy Goodreads review on why this book sucks. The next book I read was our group read for Blackathon, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, which I gave four and a half stars. I also read The Everlasting Rose, which is the sequel to The Bells. I was so pumped for this book, but it just really wasn't for me. I talked about this in one of my daily vlogs as well. The next book I read was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I gave this book five out of five stars. And after that, I read On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, which I gave four stars. So the last book that I daily vlogged was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I also went out and purchased this book, not because I loved it so much, but because I had so many thoughts and was having too much difficulty trying to understand this book without being able to annotate it. So I went and bought my own copy and it is annotated half to hell. I know I'm gonna have to reread this book because it was so complex and incredibly rich and detailed and also traumatic. It's just everything that I want in a fantasy book. And I know I'm gonna have to read it multiple times in order to truly be able to digest it. So I'm going to save this from rating until further notice. And now we're at the point where I just talk to you about the books that you haven't seen my thoughts on yet, the books that I didn't discuss in my daily vlog because I hadn't read them yet. The first book I read in February that I didn't vlog about is The Bridge Home by Padma Venkatraman. It tells the story of two sisters, Fiji and Ruku, who are 11 and I believe 14, and these girls escape their father's household because unfortunately their father is very abusive and decide to kind of try and survive on the streets of India where they live. So this book is about chosen family and and homelessness and religion and just so many things it had incredible themes and it explored them all in such a complex but specific way that I really 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 appreciated this is the only book that I read in February that wasn't by a black author and didn't feature black main characters but I had to read it because it was on my highly anticipated list 
and I knew that there was something special about it and I just wanted to get it into my brain as soon as possible. There's just something so pure and specific about middle grade fiction. It has the ability to talk about very real and heavy topics in a way that's not too difficult for the reader to digest. And I think that middle grade is kind of where a lot of us as readers kind of get our start because that's when we truly fall in love with books for the most part. Now that's not the case with me. I have loved words ever since I started speaking them and I began to read at a very early age. So I didn't really need to be coaxed into books, but I know that a lot of people struggle with falling in love with books. And I think that that turning point for a lot of us is when we are in middle school. So long story short, I could not wait to get my hands on this book and I'm so glad that I read it. It was an amazing story. She is the main character of the book. We get to read the story through Viji's perspective, but her sister Ruku is actually the eldest sister and Ruku has autism. So the dynamic between these two sisters was really interesting and special to read about, especially because Viji is the youngest sister, but she has so much weight on her shoulders and is really struggling to protect her older sister in a world that just either hates her or wants to take advantage of her. The book also explored faith and religion and doubt in religion in a way that I really appreciated as somebody who just doesn't have faith myself. And I liked that our main character grew up in such a religious background, but just it never spoke to her. And she kind of learns to have faith in things other than God. And the ending of this book absolutely ripped my heart right out of my chest in, in a way that only middle grade fiction can do. I highly, highly recommend it. I gave it somewhere between four and four and a half stars. It wasn't a perfect book for me, but I also don't have any legitimate criticisms against it. When you are in this situation where you have a book that you can't necessarily criticize, but you just feel like it didn't have the oomph that a five-star read should have, what do you do? Do you rate the book five stars because it's worthy of five stars? Or do you only rate books five-star books if they become like your favorite masterpieces of all time? Next, I read Fly Girl by Sherry Smith. It's a historical fiction novel about a young woman named Ida who desperately wants to be a pilot, except it's the 1940s and black women are not allowed to fly planes. The military finally launches their WASP program, which is a program that actually existed. It was open to white women only, and white women, if they had the credentials, were able to fly planes during the war. Now, Ida has incredibly light skin and is able to pass as white, so she decides to hide her identity as a black woman in order to join the WASP and make her dream become a reality. Ida's family is completely against her decision to go into the military and to pass herself off as a white woman. And it's really interesting to see Ida struggle with letting go of her blackness and trying to assimilate herself into white culture. It went into racism and internalized prejudice in a way that I extremely appreciated. And Ida herself is definitely not a perfect character character, especially in these regards. Cherry Smith does an awesome job of getting you to really fall in love with characters that you might not love otherwise or under different circumstances. And it's really interesting to think about the prejudices that people held that were definitely products of their time. And it makes you question what you would do if you lived in that era and were put under such similar circumstances. Like one of the things that's really difficult in the book is that, so Ida's father comes from a family that has very strategically married lighter and lighter throughout the years because they wanted to have children that were light enough to not have to suffer racism. And Ida's father kind of broke that tradition when he married Ida's mother, who was a dark skinned black woman. This practice was very popular in the 1920s all the way through like the 1970s because racism for black folks was so bad that black parents just didn't want to have black children because they wanted to spare their kids from the realities of being a black individual in America. And this made me wonder what I would have done in that situation if that's a practice I would have supported. I also just loved all of the girl power. You get to see a lot of feminism in this book because this is the first time that women are being allowed to fly in the military. So sexism and women's rights was a part of this book too. And I just really appreciated all of the pilot actions because I am so fascinated by planes, even though I've never been on a flight that wasn't commercial. So I gave this book 4.25 stars because it was very singular in its plot and it's just a personal preference. I tend to like books that juggle multiple plots that are very rich and layered and complex. And I know some people kind of prefer a one plot story. So this book just didn't have the level of complexity that I reach for in my books. It's totally fine, it's just a personal preference. But I do want to know if you like to read books that have multiple plot lines going on or if you prefer a simple, singular, one direction kind of story. The next book I read was Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson, who is an amazing writer. And this book is essentially her memoir told through a series of poems. I listened to this book on audiobook because it's spoken word and is intended to be heard. And I know that 
my enjoyment of this book, my experience of it was absolutely enhanced by listening to the audiobook, especially because Jacqueline Woodson is the narrator. My enjoyment of this book was absolutely through the roof. It was beautiful. I really, really liked that Jacqueline talked so much about her struggles with reading and having dyslexia. We have this very misguided idea that people who are writers or speak multiple languages or just are great with words have always been that way. And it was really cool to see that Jacqueline Woodson wasn't just like a natural born writer, that it came easy for her. It was something that she really struggled with and I just felt very connected to her because I definitely had my own struggles with academia growing up. It's not gonna be for everybody because it's told kind of in like a snapshot style. We jump around quite a bit and it doesn't feel like a cohesive like singular story that has a beginning, middle, and end. It feels more like you're peeking through the window of Jacqueline Woodson's life and I thought the style was really unique and cool. I personally do not assign a rating value to other people's memoirs or their ability to communicate their own experiences for so many reasons. It's just not my thing. So I'm not going to give it a rating but I absolutely recommend it and I know I'm going to be listening to it again in the future. It was really, really beautiful. I also read a couple novellas. The first one was The Black God's Drums by PJ Clark. It's a space western set in New Orleans, which sounded amazing. It tells the story of a 13 year old girl named Creeper who is an orphan and pretty much survives on the streets by selling information to people and stealing. But my favorite thing about Creeper's character is that she shares a body with Oya, the African goddess of wind and storms. Now Creeper is able to tap in and harness some of Oya's powers, but the two definitely don't always see eye to eye. And it's Creeper's goal to get onto a spaceship and like join a space crew and be a space pirate. So that is essentially what the book is about. She finds out that there is a weapon called the Black God's Drums and she, it's pretty much her job to prevent that weapon from destroying the city. So I was absolutely sold that it has one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen in my entire life. I gave this book 4.25 stars only because it didn't have enough of the space element to me. I wanted more time on the spaceships, more of the space battles. The space pirate aspect of the story felt very tacked on to the end and I just wanted to see it featured throughout the novel like 10 times more. So I hope that there's going to be some sort of a sequel that takes place more in space because I would love to see that. I also read Binti by Nettie Akora 4 and I also gave that 4.25 stars just because I wasn't really interested in the book until the very, very, very end. Our main character in this novella is Binti. She comes from a highly advanced civilization of people that are just known for their ability to create inventions and mathematics. So they're a very smart people but they don't believe in leaving their colony. Inti, however, wants to see the world. She wants to experience other cultures and communities, so she applies and gets accepted into a very prestigious university that no one from her culture has ever gone to. Except if you leave your community, they will shun you forever. So unfortunately, when she decides to go to this university, she has to give up her entire family and people. They'll never speak to her again. One of those people that really values knowledge over almost anything else, so I identify and relate to Binti's character and her sacrifice so much. And I just, unfortunately, I wasn't really interested or invested in the story until the very end. That being said though, I cannot wait to continue with the rest of the novellas. The ending was so cool. I also think I'm just not as in love with Nnedi Okorafor's writing as I would like to be. I read Akata Witch and I just wasn't thrilled with the writing style. I am gonna keep continuing to read her books because I'm trying so hard to like her. I like the stories and the plots and the characters she creates. It's just like her execution and the way that she writes that kind of makes me feel less invested in these stories than I would like to be. If you'd like to hear about the comics and the graphic novels I read for Blackathon, definitely check out my vlog that I did on both of those. But the last book that we're going to talk about is Freshwater by Akweke Amese. Freshwater tells the story of Ada who is born in Nigeria and moves to America and she has been plagued by a possession of the gods. In the United States we refer to this as Dissociative Identity Disorder, previously known as Multiple Personality Disorder, but some communities in Africa view this as being possessed by spirits or entities. I picked up this book because I heard incredible things about it and I also was very curious to see a representation of mental illness and mental health that wasn't just from a Western or an American lens and this book absolutely did not disappoint me. I could go on and on about how incredible the writing was, how unpredictable the plot was, how the relationship between Ada and the gods inside of her was one of my favorite relationships that I've ever seen in a, in a book. 
ever. I could talk about how lyrical and complex and structured and poetic the writing style is and how it definitely won't be for everybody, especially if you don't like that flowery prose style of writing. But I'm not going to talk about any of that because this video would get so long so fast. Between Freshwater and Let's Go Swimming on Doomsday, I cannot decide which of these two books is my favorite book of Blackathon. Their plots are so completely different. Let's Go Swimming on Doomsday is about a young Somali boy who was forced to become a terrorist in order to save his family. And Freshwater is about a young woman who has suffered horrible amounts of trauma and has to cope with her body not being hers because it's owned and possessed by multiple gods. The books are so completely different, but they both left me stunned and silent at the end of them. They ripped out my hearts. They stuck with me long after I finished reading them. This is my copy of Freshwater. I got it about a week ago. I tried to wait until the end of the year, but I had to have it on my shelves. I had to own it. I listened to this book in the audiobook form. It's read by the author, and I also think that my enjoyment of this book was definitely due to the audiobook, hands down. It's probably one of my favorite audiobooks of all time. The author did an amazing job communicating and translating this story. But I am really excited to reread it and annotate it in the physical form. I'm super pumped. And I highly recommend anybody, anybody watching to read these books. I really want to thank everybody who participated in Blackathon, who either tweeted about it or supported it or reached out and had kind things to say about this readathon because it, it became so much more than a readathon. When Francina, Lauren, and myself started Blackathon, we just wanted to circulate and share more black literature. We wanted to get people reading more diversely and we wanted to celebrate our own blackness. And that definitely happened, but so much more happened as a result. I found that just by reading books with black main characters, I started to love and appreciate my own features so much more. There were so many stories that I read during the month of February for Blackathon that I never would have known existed if I hadn't been searching for them. And I'm so glad that I read them. I'm glad that I read Fly Girl and The Black God's Drums and Binti. Even though they weren't my favorite books, I still got an incredible amount out of them. Penguin Teen also wrote an article shouting out Blackathon and encouraging people to participate and gave a list of books that you could read that met the challenges. And that was freaking amazing because I had no idea that Penguin Teen was even listening to our content. It was honestly your support of this readathon that made it so empowering for me. And to have been the host of something so important to so many people is truly an honor. So I just really wanna thank you guys for supporting it because it really made me feel special. And it was also really special to know that so many of you who weren't black cared about reading books with black main characters. That was freaking awesome to see. I know there's gonna be more of Blackathon in the future. Let me know if it's something that you would want to see biannually or if it's something that you kind of just wanna participate in in February of every year. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and let me know if you plan on reading Freshwater or Let's Go Swimming on Doomsday. I'm gonna take a guess and say that both of these books will be in my top 10 books of 2019. Let's see if that actually happens, but I will be completely shocked if they don't make the list. They were that good. You guys have to read them. Stay sharp and I will see you in my next video.